Lesson 6 Unlimited Possibilities Sabbath Afternoon August 1 In every period of this Earth's history, God has had His men of opportunity to whom He has said, Ye are my witnesses. In every age there have been devout men who gathered up rays of light as they flashed upon their pathway and who spoke to the people the words of God. Enoch, Noah, Moses, Daniel, and the long roll of patriarchs and prophets, these were ministers of righteousness. They were not infallible. They were weak, erring men. But the Lord wrought through them as they gave themselves to His service. Since His ascension, Christ, the great head of the church, has carried forward his work in the world by chosen ambassadors through whom he speaks to the children of men and ministers to their needs. The position of those who have been called of God to labor in word and doctrine for the upbuilding of his church is one of grave responsibility. In Christ's stead, they are to beseech men and women to be reconciled to God, and they can fulfill their mission only as they receive wisdom and power from above. Gospel Workers, page 13. Thank God that it is our privilege to be called witnesses for God. Then if we are witnesses, we must speak for Christ and lift Him up among our associates. When we see the ardor and religious zeal of any of our companions growing cool, we must help and encourage such a one, pray with and for him that he may be a true witness for the Lord. You are to be the agent through whom God will speak to the soul. Precious things will be brought to your remembrance, and with a heart overflowing with the love of Jesus, you will speak words of vital interest and import. Your simplicity and sincerity will be the highest eloquence, and your words will be registered in the books of heaven as fit words which are like apples of gold in pictures of silver. God will make them a healing flood of heavenly influence, awakening conviction and desire, and Jesus will add his intercession to your prayers and claim for the sinner the gift of the Holy Spirit and pour it upon his soul. And there will be joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Sons and Daughters of God, page 274. Those who love Jesus will bring all in their lives into harmony with his will. Through the grace of God, they are enabled to keep their purity of principle unsullied. Holy angels are close beside them, and Christ is revealed in their steadfast adherence to the truth. They are Christ's minutemen, bearing, as true witnesses, a decided testimony in favor of the truth. They show that there is a spiritual power that can enable men and women not to swerve an inch from truth and justice for all the gifts that men can bestow. Such ones, wherever they may be, will be honored of heaven because they have conformed their lives to the will of God, caring not what sacrifices they are called upon to make. God's Amazing Grace, page 247. Sunday, August 2. Differing Gifts, United in Service. Union is strength, and the Lord desires that this truth should be ever revealed in all the members of the body of Christ. All are to be united in love, in meekness, in lowliness of mind, organized into a society of believers for the purpose of combining and diffusing their influence, they are to work as Christ worked. They are ever to show courtesy and respect for one another. Every talent has its place and is to be kept under the control of the Holy Spirit. The church is united in the holy bonds of fellowship in order that each member may be benefited by the influence of the other. All are to bind themselves to the covenant of love and harmony. The Christian principles and graces of the whole society of believers are to gather strength and force in harmonious action. Each believer is to be benefited and improved by the refining and transforming influence of the varied capabilities of the other members, that the things lacking in one may be more abundantly displayed in another. All the members are to draw together, that the church may become a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to men. Selected Messages, Book 3, Pages 15 and 16.
It is by the Lord's orders that his servants have varied gifts. It is by his appointment that men of varied minds are brought into the church to be laborers together with him. We have many different minds to meet, and different gifts are needed. God's servants are to work in perfect harmony. I thank the Lord that we are not all exactly the same, while we are all to have the same spirit, the spirit that dwelt in Christ. The Apostle John was not the same as the Apostle Peter. Each was to subdue his peculiarities and soften his temperament, that they might help each other through belief in and sanctification of the truth. We must learn to bear with the peculiarities of those around us, if our will is under the control of Christ's will, how can we be at variance with our brethren? If we are at variance, we may know that it is because self needs to be crucified. He whom Christ makes free is free indeed. We are not complete in Christ unless we love one another as Christ has loved us. This Day with God, page 262. As all the different members of the human system unite to form the entire body and each performs its office in obedience to the intelligence that governs the whole, so the members of the Church of Christ should be united in one symmetrical body subject to the sanctified intelligence of the whole. We should all feel our individual responsibility as members of the visible Church and workers in the vineyard of the Lord. Our precious Savior has invited us to join ourselves to Him and unite our weakness with His strength, our ignorance with His wisdom, our unworthiness with His merit. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 16. Monday, August 3. God, the giver of all good gifts. God has claims upon you. He has blessed you with life and with health and with capabilities, reasoning powers that you may, if you will, greatly improve or you may abuse by yielding these powers or qualities of mind to the control of Satan. You are responsible for the ability which God has given you. You may, by making the most of your privileges, fit yourself for a position of usefulness and duty. You need not be aspiring to do a great work, aspiring after great things but you may be doing your work, small though it may be, feeling your responsibility of doing this work to God's acceptance. And when you do this small work all right, God will entrust to you a still greater work. Remember, God will make use of all His children if they will surrender to Him. He has a place and work for all. There are many, you among the number, who think it not possible that God can use them. Think not this longer. You may do your little work in a manner to glorify God. This Day with God, page 243. When Christ bowed on the banks of Jordan after his baptism, the heavens were opened and the Spirit descended in the form of a dove like burnished gold and encircled him with its glory. And the voice of God from the highest heaven was heard saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The prayer of Christ in man's behalf opened the gates of heaven, and the Father had responded, accepting the petition for the fallen race. Jesus prayed as our substitute and surety, and now the human family may find access to the Father through the merits of his well-beloved Son. Communication had ceased between man and his Maker but the way has been opened so that he may return to the Father's house. The gate of heaven has been left ajar, and the radiance from the throne of God shines into the hearts of those who love him. The light that encircled the divine Son of God will fall upon the pathway of all who follow in his footsteps. My Life Today, page 260 Christ has promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to His Church, and the promise belongs to us as much as to the first disciples. We should pray as earnestly for the descent of the Holy Spirit as the disciples prayed on the day of Pentecost. If they needed it at that time, we need it more today. The measure of the Holy Spirit we receive will be proportioned to the measure of our desire and the faith exercised for it, and the use we shall make of the light and knowledge that shall be given to us. The Holy Spirit imparts love, joy, peace, strength, and consolation. 
It is as a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The blessing is free to all. The Faith I Live By, page 53 Tuesday, August 4 The Purpose of Spiritual Gifts To His servants, Christ commits His goods, something to be put to use for Him. He gives to every man His work. Each has His place in the eternal plan of heaven. Each is to work in cooperation with Christ for the salvation of souls. Not more surely is the place prepared for us in the heavenly mansions than is the special place designated on earth where we are to work for God. The talents that Christ entrusts to His Church represent especially the gifts and blessings imparted by the Holy Spirit. To one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 8 to 11. All men do not receive the same gifts, but to every servant of the Master, some gift of the Spirit is promised. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 326 and 327. Christ, the outshining of the Father's glory, came to the world as its light. He came to represent God to men, and of Him it is written that He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, and went about doing good. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. In the synagogue at Nazareth, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19. This was the work he commissioned his disciples to do. Ye are the light of the world. He said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. Christ's Object Lessons, page 416. Christ will help us to follow his example, doing good and refusing to do evil. We are to be consecrated channels through whom the love of Christ flows to those in need of help. Christ sends His light to those who keep the windows of the soul open heavenward. Under the Holy Spirit's influence, they work the works of God. He who approaches nearest to obedience to the divine law will be of the most service to God. He who follows Christ, reaching out after His goodness, His compassion, His love for the human family, will be accepted by God as a worker together with Him. Such a one will not be content to remain on a low level of spirituality. He will constantly reach higher and higher. Our High Calling, page 182 Wednesday, August 5 Discovering Your Gifts Wealth or high position, costly equipment, architecture or furnishings are not essential to the advancement of the work of God. Neither are achievements that win applause from men and administer to vanity. Worldly display, however imposing, is of no value in God's sight. Above the seen and temporal, He values the unseen and eternal. The former is of worth only as it expresses the latter. The choicest productions of art possess no beauty that can compare with the beauty of character, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit's working in the soul. God can use every person just in proportion as He can put His Spirit into the soul temple. The work that He will accept is the work that reflects His image. His followers are to bear, as their credentials to the world, the ineffaceable characteristics of His immortal principles. The Ministry of Healing, pages 36 and 37. The Holy Spirit, the representative of Himself, is the greatest of all gifts. All good things are comprised in this. 
The Creator Himself can give us nothing greater, nothing better. When we beseech the Lord to pity us in our distress and to guide us by His Holy Spirit, He will never turn away our prayer. It is possible even for a parent to turn away from his hungry child, but God can never reject the cry of the needy and longing heart. With what wonderful tenderness He has described His love. To those who in days of darkness feel that God is unmindful of them, this is the message from the Father's heart. Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Isaiah chapter 49 verses 14 to 16 Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 132 a revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. To seek this should be our first work. There must be earnest effort to obtain the blessing of the Lord, not because God is not willing to bestow His blessing upon us, but because we are unprepared to receive it. Our Heavenly Father is more willing to give His Holy Spirit to them that ask Him than our earthly parents to give good gifts to their children. But it is our work by confession, humiliation, repentance, and earnest prayer to fulfill the conditions upon which God has promised to grant us His blessing. A revival need be expected only in answer to prayer. While the people are so destitute of God's Holy Spirit, they cannot appreciate the preaching of the Word. But when the Spirit's power touches their hearts, then the discourses given will not be without effect. Guided by the teachings of God's Word, with the manifestation of His Spirit, in the exercise of sound discretion, those who attend our meetings will gain a precious experience and returning home will be prepared to exert a helpful influence. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 121 Thursday, August 6 Growing Our Gifts has not God said He would give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? And is not this Spirit a real, true, actual guide? Some men seem afraid to take God at His word as though it would be presumption in them. They pray for the Lord to teach us and yet are afraid to credit the pledged word of God and believe we have been taught of Him. So long as we come to our Heavenly Father humbly and with a spirit to be taught, willing and anxious to learn, why should we doubt God's fulfillment of His own promise? You must not for a moment doubt Him and dishonor Him thereby. When you have sought to know His will, your part in the operation with God is to believe that you will be led and guided and blessed in the doing of His will. We may mistrust ourselves lest we misinterpret His teachings, but make even this a subject of prayer, and trust Him, still trust Him to the uttermost that His Holy Spirit will lead you to interpret aright His plans and the working of His providence. It was Christ who guided the Israelites through the wilderness, and it is Christ who is guiding His people today, showing them where and how to work. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 3, pages 1155 and 1156. At this time, the special endowment of divine grace and power is not less needful to the Church than in apostolic days. God will today endow men and women with power from above, as He endowed those who on the day of Pentecost heard the word of salvation. At this very hour, His Spirit and His grace are for all who need them and will take Him at His word. The gifts are already ours in Christ, but their actual possession depends upon our reception of the Spirit of God. If they are connected with Christ, if the gifts of the Spirit are theirs, the poorest and most ignorant of His disciples will have a power that will tell upon hearts. God makes them the channel for the outworking of the highest influence in the universe. The Faith I Live By, page 292 Those who hoard up their talents to rust, unemployed, 
unimproved, must not think that such action in any way relieves them from responsibility, for God holds us responsible for the good we might do if we took up the yoke with Christ, lifting his burdens, learning more of his meekness and lowliness of heart day by day. The interest continues to accumulate on buried talents, and instead of decreasing our responsibility, the burying of our talent only increases and intensifies it. That I May Know Him, page 326. For further reading, In Heavenly Places, A Mighty Unseen Power, page 22, and Christ's Object Lessons, Talents, pages 325 to 365.